Good morning. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm a veterinarian in Marietta, Georgia with a specialty in fish health. Coming to you from the car again. Uh, I apologize for the low tech nature of this, but you know, a lot of times, even though YouTube videos have gotten kind of snazzy these days, um, some of these subjects just don't really support that. And if you're interested in the subject content of a video, lots of times it, it, uh, your ears are doing most of the learning. If you see on the seat behind me really briefly, the clutter in the background of the fish van is uh, right now our lights for the fish room going in at the clinic. I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to be nice. You'll see uh, videos shot from there and some of the studies that I'm going to run as far as um, parasite clearance from fish with garlic uh, will be run. This is my, probably going to be my first project is the belief that garlic clears parasites but the purpose of this video is Siamese fighting fish I get them uh, quite frequently calls to the office saying my Siamese fighting fish is sick what should I do and I've worn out um, the message that when your fish is sick you need to test the water and establish good quality um, environment for them before you get started with medications but Siamese fighting fish are mostly like that but it's it's interesting, the most common disorder you see in Siamese fighting fish is actually tuberculosis. And I know that sounds amazing, but uh, hang on just a sec. Better lighting. Hopefully it'll stay that way. Um, Siamese fighting fish, when you call me, uh, Siamese fighting fish typically are showing signs of tuberculosis. And I need to explain what tuberculosis is. Tuberculosis is kind of like a bacteria, kind of like a virus. It's a mycobacteria. And basically, the, the, the virus is spread from fish to fish by cannibalism. And there was a study that was done that showed most of the fish that are out there have tuberculosis in them. And then you'd say, well, then why isn't everybody's fish dying of tuberculosis? And I'd say, well, because so many fish have tuberculosis that their bodies are actually over many, many millions, gajillions of years, their bodies have actually gotten kind of used to having the tuberculosis around. And so there's like a detente or draw or a Mexican standoff or however you want to call it between the um, mycobacteria and the fish itself. And so when you see tuberculosis, it generally has to do with the environment deteriorating and allowing the tuberculosis to get the upper hand on the victim fish. So to restate, if you had 95% of the fish in the tropical fish hobby have eaten a brother or sister or some other fish or picked on the remains of some dead fish or whatever, they probably have ingested some mycobacteria, which didn't kill them because uh, straight off the bat, their immune system supported them against that, but they have it in there. And next time they get chilled or underfed or overfed or the water quality deteriorates or the pH crashes or they're not fed good quality food or whatever, the tuberculosis comes out and emerges as the problem. So the number one disease of Siamese fighting fish is tuberculosis, or at least that's what I see. Um, symptoms of tuberculosis in Siamese fighting fish are usually um, little lumps that get on them those are granulomas or little piles of tissue reacting to the tuberculosis tearing the fish up on the inside. Um, if you um, see that on the fish, it doesn't mean it's not skin cancer. It doesn't mean that it's not areas where flukes have chewed them up or whatever. But a lot of times you'll see a Siamese fighting fish, usually after the first two years or so, as they're starting to age a little bit and their immune system starts to decline, they'll start getting these bumps and tumors and stuff in their skin or what appear to be tumors in their skin. Uh, even more commonly than that, a Siamese fighting fish with tuberculosis will start to um, lose weight. They get thinner and thinner their fins may start to become uh, shorter and less vibrant. They all look thinner. And then they'll start getting little see-through dropouts between the rays as the fins just kind of deteriorate. Um, the fish itself may actually seem to be getting smaller. And actually the reason for that is because tuberculosis' favorite organ inside the fish to work on is the liver. 
fact, if you want to know whether a fish has tuberculosis or not, before it starts showing symptoms, you can, well, it dies in the process, but you can actually take some liver tissue and smash it on a slide, biopsy it, and look at the liver tissue under the microscope and you'll actually see granulomas, little pockets of tuberculosis being walled off by the liver tissue. And those granulomas are where the tuberculosis hides until the fish uh, is weakened enough for the tuberculosis to break out of those cysts and die of the tuberculosis. Um, so liver damage, significant liver damage causes the fish basically to waste away, even though it's eating. There are other causes of Siamese fighting fish losing weight while they're eating. Uh, intestinal hexameda, intestinal spironucleus. Um, those might be things worth uh, looking up possibly in my channel. Those are going to be videos way down the road because they're relatively uncommon. So weight loss and loss of condition in Siamese fighting fish is a pretty good indicator that tuberculosis has activated. Also, very commonly you'll see a Siamese fighting fish that has started to become kind of lethargic, losing weight, but the belly is getting big, not soft, but big and firm. And on the necropsies or autopsies that I've done on those Siamese fighting fish upon their demise, um, you'll find the liver has been converted into a giant chunk of scar tissue around all the tuberculosis. So as the liver is turning into scar tissue, the fish is starving away around it, and you end up with a fish that looks like a tadpole with a big cancerous liver and a small fish trying to live around that. Um, Tuberculosis cures, well, good luck limiting spread if it turns out that 395 out of 400 fish that were studied came to you with tuberculosis already there. Um, curing it, here's a theory. If you kept the fish in the best quality, best quality environment at 78 degrees with moderate aeration and abundant live plants or algae to keep nitrates and background pollution to a minimum, maybe you could improve the quality of, the, of life for the fish enough to where the tuberculosis goes back under control. Because like I said, the only reason tuberculosis doesn't kill every fish it touches is because their immune system is neutral with it. And uh, most of the time the immune system keeps tuberculosis at bay, but you start screwing up with water quality or feeding and temperature and the tuberculosis comes out and kicks the, fish and kicks the fish's rear end. So, not much you can do about tuberculosis except prevent it by providing an optimal environment. What else gets Siamese fighting fish? Well, after tuberculosis, a lot of the usual stuff. Um, and the funny thing is, let's look at the symptoms of uh, water quality deterioration in Siamese fighting fish. They, uh, they breathe a little heavier. They get kind of slimy. Their fins will pinch down. Their tail will turn into kind of like a tube instead of a spread out uh, fan. They will uh, slow or stop eating, uh, isolate to the bottom, and uh, may start to get marks on them. If they're a light colored fish, they could actually get red marks on them, that sort of thing. That would be for water quality deterioration. Um, parasites, if the fish has picked up some uh, kilodinella or came to you with kilodinella and it's proliferating to a problem, you're going to see some um, isolating behavior, uh, some clamped fins, some decreased appetite, um, some weight loss. The fish is going to um, breathe a little harder, get slimy skin, maybe some red marks in the lighter colored areas, and um, you know, the tail will turn into kind of a tube. And I, I don't know if you're getting the um, subtly delivered sarcasm Symptom, and I say this all the time, symptoms in the fish of deteriorated water quality are exactly the same as symptoms in the fish with parasitism. So when you see a slimy fish on the bottom with clamped fins, it could just as easily be high ammonia as it could be kilodinella. And it's frustrating when people start breaking out all these medical treatments for kilodinella when they could just test the water and it's high ammonia. Water change, boom. Okay, so let's just say that your Siamese fighting fish is manifesting th those symptoms. What do you do? Well, there's 
two or three options. One option is to assess the environment, make sure temperature, feeding, and water quality is good, uh, and then fix those problems, and then proceed with a treatment for putative parasites. That's what I would do. Um, knowing whether or not you're managing water quality and feeding correctly is a good thing and saves the fish future problems. Otherwise, if you just go in with a shotgun treatment, uh, you may save the fish from that problem, but never know that you have another one. Long and the short of it is, six Siamese fighting fish. Say it has tuberculosis, what are you going to do? So let's push that over there. If you can see it's got lumps all over it, then it probably is tuberculosis and you can just maybe go get another Siamese fighting fish. Um, but let's just say it's unspecific and you're not sure and maybe you just got it. Maybe you just set his tank up. So maybe it's water quality or parasites. What could you do? You could ta -da, execute a 50% water change and dechlorinate. In doing that, you improve water quality. Make sure the water temperature is in the high 70s, say 76, 78 degrees. If you want to increase aeration, that works great. If you have a tiny little air stone to put into a two gallon fish bowl, that's good. But you don't want to use an air stone so powerful that it rolls the fish around and creates more stress. Keep feeding the fish, but very small quantities, maybe one tiny little tiny mini pellet. Say Hikari beta food is good. Um, one pellet twice a day just to keep food going through the system. If he'll eat, don't offer it if he won't. And finally, uh, best shotgun treatment for Siamese fighting fish is a medicine called Mardell Clout, sold by Fritz Industries. It's in a blue bottle as of this posting, 2017, almost 2018. It's in a, a blue and white bottle. I'll probably put a picture up in the video so you can see it, but it's Clout, C-L-O-U-T. And uh, I have links to it all over my website, coivet.com, K-O-I-V-E-T.com, and linked up pretty good there. So Mardell Clout can be used in a fishbowl environment, small Siamese fighting fish tank, and has an excellent spectrum against most of the parasites that would be attacking a Siamese fighting fish. Uh, in particular, ciliated protozoan parasites, even to a certain extent, ick, white spot. Uh, normally in tropical fish tanks, Mardell might not be that great against ick because it has to stick around while the ick organism matures. Uh, in a, in a fishbowl environment, a lot of times Mardell will stick around a little bit longer and uh, if dosed on, a, on the daily, carefully on the daily, you should be able to get ahead of most, if not all, ciliated protozoan parasites. Flukes, still working on that. I don't know uh, conclusively whether flukes go away. They often do, but lots of times flukes have self-limiting um, infections just with clean water. So uh, your 50% water change might go a long way towards that. So um, improve water quality and Mardell clout. And I'm going to do a specific video just on Mardell clout because there's so many different ways to dose it. But in the Siamese fighting fish environment where you're trying to shotgun a possible parasite, what you would do is you would calculate the dose out. The clout is used at a rate of one pill per 10 gallons of water. And so what you would do is you would, um, you're going to have to break down the dose if you've got a two-gallon fish bowl, you're going to need a 20th of a tablet. Um, so what you would do under those circumstances is take one tablet and dissolve it in a gallon of water. Then you would take that gallon jug, and that's what you're going to dose your system on. You would take 20% of the water that's in that gallon jug, and you would put that in your two-gallon fish bowl. So you see basically creating a liquid version of the pill and then using 20% of that solution in your two gallon fish bowl to get the equivalent of 20% of one tablet in, um, in a two gallon fish bowl. And uh, so dosing accordingly with the Mardella. Now, if you think it might be ick, you'd wanna dose on a daily, three days in a row, skip a day, and then one more treatment. And if you're really precautious, you would do it 
three days in a row, skip a day, another dose, skip a day, another dose. Well, that would put you ahead of the flukes. And you're not going to lose fish to that treatment. Uh, they don't really care much about Mardell clout, at least not uh, Siamese fighting fish. And, uh, and that's a pretty good remedy. If there are parasites sticking out of the Siamese fighting fish, like anchor worm or fish lice, uh, A, that would be crazy rare. Uh, and B, you would want to be looking up a video on fish lice and um, anchor worm. So... Basically, Siamese fighting fish diseases in the majority are the manifestation of fish tuberculosis as a result of deteriorated water quality over... No, nope, didn't have a wreck. Just some really bright sun. Absurd sun. 